Hey guys, have it. It's a late night. Got a lot of 3D printers to fix. Um, this one is a Beku, which is actually, as far as I know, it's the same company as Big Tree Tech. So I, I think it has an SKR2 board in there, or an SKR103 uh, board, in there, I can't remember. Um, but this is actually one of my favorite entry level printers. I actually like this more than the uh, Ender 3. Um, so yeah, it's just a Bowden tube set up here. Um, I don't even know what's actually wrong with it. So, turn it on. Mm, must be an older board because I don't have the fans not being controlled by pulse width modulation. Like I can tell because the, the, the heat sink fan goes on automatically. Or the uh, cooling fin for the uh, extruder. Uh, but it does look like a... Okay. Let's deal with this thing. So, make sure... Actually, I don't think it even has end stops. Oh no, there is an end stop right there. That's where the end stop is right here. Is there supposed to be something right here? I can't remember. I'll have to look at the picture of the factory. I don't know if that's the actual end stop here. Like, okay, there's an end stop back here. Like I said, if this is actually running like Trinamic 22 weights or 2209 drivers, well, 2209s, you could actually have like sensorless humming. Um, <sighs> kind of dusty. Um, yeah, single Z access. That's. Uh, and then you have a override stop here. There's no BL touch, there's no sensor. So what is. Okay, that's just the belt. Let's see if I do an auto home, see what happens. Menu, let's see, I can, um, actually, let's see if it's actually one of those ones you can actually, yeah, you can switch to Marlin, classic, cool, yeah, okay, you know, I want to try to emulate what the person's going to be doing, it's, um, all right, where is the home button? Zoom it. Um. Alright, should go this way. X. Well, that's obviously the problem right there. Um, won't even home. Alright, so. Yeah, I mean, I can see, like. I got a picture here. See this right here? I can look at the factory printer and see this right here. I don't know if you guys can see that. Um, grab a little pen here. I'm assuming this is that's usually the, the end stops over here on Crowley's. And I'm, I'm most printers, I, I'd say 90% of printers are on that side, but I think this is the end stop here. But this is not in the right spot. So I'm trying to figure out if there's a cover that's supposed to go here, because this is not being triggered. All right, so it's actually called a Biku, I don't even know how to pronounce that, B1 printer. And it looks like that thing right there looks like it's supposed to be from the factory. So I'm thinking this thing is moved position. If you can even move it, why is that out of position? So um, let me turn around and see if I can See if there's sort of adjustment for it. All right, so I know what's wrong with it now. So the end stop is broken. Obviously, there should be a little metal tab that goes on here like that, just like this right here. See a little metal tab on there? Click, click. Show you this right here. Any typical end stop, just click, click, click. I mean, some I've actually seen end stops where they don't have a metal thing on there, but that that is the end stop. That's why it threw me off at first. All right, so let me see if I have an extra end stop. All right, so I found this in one of my boxes, and it looks like it could be, be the exact same PCB and board on there. Maybe that's eh, thicker, but I guess I can desolder it off of there. Um, right, so a couple M3 screws came off, but it looks like the end stop is part of our larger PCB. 
So, um, I guess what I can do is just desolder this one right here and swap them out. So I need a two millimeter screw here. Um, take this plate off and see what's behind there. Yeah, it looks like it's USB 3.0. I mean, I already knew this, but that kind of confirms that Big Tree Tech and Biku are the same company. Um, yeah, look at the heatsink. That's pretty cool. I don't think that's a their own design of a heatsink. That's definitely not a Creality knockoff. Even the nozzle is bigger too. That's cool. I'm glad they came up with their own stuff. I'm just gonna take the uh, unsolder this one and replace it with this one. Yeah, I really do actually like this printer. Actually, I would probably prefer this. I think this is actually better than Ender 3 for entry level. Um, because you actually have these LEDs right here. I just noticed this. You have this clear, you know, double. Um, I mean, which you don't really need double. But nice circular pattern, but it has these LEDs built into the PCB here. So that is actually really cool. So that's one reason why I definitely buy this over a Creality, probably. Normally I probably wouldn't do this, but because this board is probably hard to get, it may take, I mean, you probably have to get it AliExpress. I guess I even check Amazon, but, um, because these are just to swap the end stop out here. All right, let's see that now. Click, click, and right, X end stop. All right, it's funny, they get to see a lot of different 3D printers, which is cool. Um, but what's funny is they're all, they're all different, but they all function the same way, you know, X core, XYZ. A, B. Um, okay. All right, let's say something. Press up again. Okay. Home. I think it was menu, movement, home. Home. All right. X works. Y works. And there's no probe, there's no BL touch or inductive or capacitive probe. So it's the old school adjusters. Um, and I know there's, they have the end stop in the back. It's like a fixed stop. Oh, it's an end stop. <laughs> I don't know if there's a broken compact flash card in there or something. I can't get my, my uh, I'm a compact flash card, my uh, micro SD card. All right, so I have the back cover off. Just want to look at the SD card. Uh, I'm trying to figure out if there's something stuck in there or not. Or if they have it, because there's a, there's a compact flash card over here. There's one here and one here. What kind of board is that? Uh, SKR2. I thought the SKR2 had pulse with modulated uh, fan. Make sure you check SKR2. So those are probably either going to be 2208s or 2209s. So i got to figure out why my compact flash card doesn't go in there. Like, like I suspected. Yeah, so I'm working at nighttime, so my light's not great in here. But broken flash card. Bummer. All right. So now I can put mine in there. I had to pop these little tabs in here. So you can get your tweezers in and get it back in there. I'm going to put those tabs back in there in place. Okay. All right. Let's do this thing, some printing here. I did uh, 30 skirt layers. Just want to make sure Z is off or set correctly. Yeah, that is interesting, though, that the SKR2 board should actually have... It's not 1.2, it's 2. This should be pulse with modulated control. You could turn the fan off when it's not in use to make it quieter. But it's a pretty noisy printer, though. So, yeah, the fans here are, are pretty loud. Like the uh, motherboard cooling fan. All right, Z offset looks a little tight. So, I'm going to bring that. Guessing up. Get it to about three and see what happens. That seems really tight. Make sure we're not slipping on the stuff here. Still really tight. 
bring this up to negative two five. Man, let's try two two seven. Okay. That's what I'm doing. Well, when I'm first dialing the printer in, you can see where they had it too tight here. Um, I do like 30 uh, skirt layer lines. That way I can dial it in before it starts doing the cube. So 2.7 looks pretty good. What I'm looking for is lines that are connecting. There's no like stringy lines. Nice flat, flat surface. I mean, I can even probably go down a tenth. Yeah, because if it's too loose, you're not going to get good layer adhesion. So the part won't stick to the board or the plate. I mean, I could probably go down 5.05. Yeah, I'll go down. Sorry, lights going crazy on me. That's pretty good right there. Oh, there's a little tight in the back corner. I just noticed that. So, I mean, I'll go back up. I'll keep it at 2.7. So, what I'd want to do is tighten the set screw and that would bring it closer down on the on some far right corner. Because you're not, you don't have a probe, so you use the four adjusters on the bottom. Yeah, I'd probably do about a quarter return on one of those, uh, on this one right here. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll show you guys. Well, let a turn. Quarter turn in. So, sorry, light, stupid. Let's see if it makes any difference. Give me a little bit more. Like once you've done, you fixed enough 3D printers that you just kind of, just kind of know this stuff, man. Uh, I could probably go. Yeah, then we're gonna see. It's making a difference now. Maybe just a little bit more. This one could probably come up a little bit. Alright, yeah, so let this finish and come back. Make sure everything works correct. No, it didn't fail halfway through the print. And um, I'll tell the customer it's fixed. All right, there it is. Um, I mean, little ghosting on the edge. I don't know. I agree. I think it did have a point two layer height. All right, cool. So M that works. Parents back in business. Let me try to save that. Save to EEPROM. That's cool that you can actually do it from the graphical interface. Originally, you couldn't like a long time ago when they first came out. You couldn't interface directly with the EEPROM. Um, the motherboard EEPROM. Okay, so awesome. So another print 3D printer fixed. Um, if you guys are in the Orange County area and you want me to take a look at your printer, uh, oc3dtech.com. All right, cool.